Thank you. We want to commence this um, interview session by knowing who exactly is Dr. Solomon Arase. Uh, thank you very much, uh, John. Solomon Arase is just uh, is a Nigerian uh, of Benin extraction yeah. or Edo extraction, and uh, I have I went through uh, the police services after my university education and. Uh, by divine providence, I, I rose to the peak of my career. Okay, what, what would you want to tell us? Um, what exactly motivated you into the police force? Uh, that was an accident. <laughs> I I did my youth service in Lagos uh, at the Federal Secretariat Establishment Department, and um, the police service commission was just close to Kotiabo Street, close to the place there. And, uh, during that period, you used to see a lot of young men, whenever there's an interview, uh, we, we, we all, you know, flock to the interview, this thing. Uh, job was not as difficult as it is now. Even when we're still in the universities, you know, they came in to interview us. So I went for the interview and uh, from the old Bend Estate, we were close to about 100 and about uh, 15 of us came through and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of curiosity, the training was supposed to be in Jos. Of all the states in the country, I've never been to Jos, so I, you know, I, I said, okay, since the police service commission is going to give me a flight ticket, let me just go and know Jos and come back to Lagos. And that is that, you know, the, the rest is now history. You, you, you saw something, something impacted in your educational career. You had your, your first degree, second degree, and a PhD. Um, what family background? What will you say impacted? greatly in your career choice okay um my i grew up in a family of uh, academicians my mother was a school teacher the younger brother you know who grew up with her you know was also into academics he was to become a professor in library science professor sami fidon and uh, i got introduced to literatures mm -hmm. you know very early in my in life you know uh, secondary school, when we go on holidays, my uncle had a library. It was, it was a library. So all the African writer series were all on his shelf. So, and he will insist if he's going to work that before he comes back, you must read one. And when you read one, when he, when, when he comes back, you start narrating, wow. you know, the story. So I got, uh, I actually wanted to be a journalist. Oh. Because of, <laughs> yeah, because of the, you know, the use of language in most of the, um, in most of the literature so i i got introduced to academics very early in life and uh, by the time i joined the police my the one of the conditions my mother gave to me was that uh, i was uh, not going to stop you know that i must have a master's degree and uh, from one thing to the other and uh, until i ended up you know having a phd wow. mm. Would you want to tell us what did you study in your first degree and your second degree okay i my first degree was uh, in political science in amadou Bele university and then I, that is the uh, academic qualification I use in joining the Nigerian police force. Then along the line, I now started reading law mm -hmm. because I felt that uh, law will be more relevant to mm -hmm. my policing career. So I did a first degree in law in, in Uniben. Then uh, I got posted to Lagos. Uh, after the law school, uh, somebody encouraged me, say, ah, can't you go and do a master's in uh, you know, corporate management and finance law. So I went to Lasso, got that done. And uh, by the time I, I got back, I became a principal staff officer to the Inspector General of Police. So that was just the encouragement. And um, along my career too, I had uh, I had some uh, low points. Um, when I was a commissioner of police in 20, 2000 and, uh, 2003, I left, no, 2007, I left to the Defense College um, to go and do strategic studies. While we were there, myself and some other police officers were retarded. Mm. They said um, we were, that our promotion was irregular, there was no police service commission. So I got very, very upset. <laughs> and I said, you know, once I finished my master's in strategic studies in Ibadan, I was going to exit from the police force. I was not going to do it anymore. So I, on my way to Ibadan to resume, I stopped at Inagboma to see my uncle. 
uh, Professor Efido, and uh, we discussed it. He said, okay, 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 yeah, you know, I will not, uh, I won't stop, I won't stop you from doing what you want to do. But you know, you've been in the police force for 20 something years. If you come out, what are, where are you going to fit in? So maybe academics, why not just take a PhD? So by the time you are rounding up your, your master's in strategic studies, um, you can start a PhD program. It will take you maybe about five or six sessions, depending on how fast you are, so that you can now have a fallback position, you know, going into, you know, the uh, university system. So that was how <laughs> that one happened. But by the time I took that, um, two years later, my, my rank was restored. Another year after, I was given an AIG. Uh, so I was still doing the program while, uh, while on, because we mostly coursework. So I continued and um, by the grace of God, um, 13 months to when I was supposed to exit the police force, I was announced as the 18th Indigenous Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, about six months before I finished my tenure, I, my PhD, you know, I graduated, you know, with my PhD degree. So, um, so what I started doing after then, you know, after I retired, was to now start using all the knowledge I have garnered over the years. Uh, engaging, you know, delivering papers both within and outside the country, uh, writing books, you know, on policing, you know, security sector reform. So it's been a, it's been an interesting six years of retirement. Does does, does um, all of your academic um, achievements uh, gave you an upper hand when you were serving in the police force? No. The uh, your academic uh, <laughs> your academic background has nothing to do with uh, with uh, your prospect in the in, this, in service. Uh, you just follow your career paths. Uh, those degrees they are personal to you. You know, not um, it, do, it doesn't uh, add anything. The only thing that uh, I can say it did to my career was uh, I was a principal staff officer to three inspector generals of police back to back for five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one further okay. sharpened my skills, okay. my writing skills. Uh, you have to do if you're doing a, a, an academic paper from the for the IG. Yeah. You have to go know how to research the papers. Have to do bibliography. Have to do referencing. You know, so it, it now became part of my system. And uh, uh, my officers who were with me, they they now started. I started impacting on them uh, because you cannot. If I can't ask you to go and do me a paper and you come back. Mm -hmm. And the, the paper is not, you know, doesn't have depth, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that is the only area where the academics came to be. But in terms of impact on the career, no, I just followed my career paths. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it helping you now, outside service? Yes, okay. yes. That is exactly, that is the joy that I have. Okay. And uh, that is the message that I also sent to my other colleagues who are still there. Yeah. That, you know, whatever, you know, skills you acquire, while you are in, while you are policing, you know they are never lost. Yes. Yeah, they will still come in handy whenever you need them. Well, what were your high points in, during the, during service? As in, your, the major things that you say, I can never forget this thing in service. Well, um, first it was when I was made the AIG in charge of intelligence. I knew that intelligence is the hub of policing, and it was a Herculean task. Because if you remember, um, the special branch of the Nigerian police force was what was a size to form the uh, NSO, the oh, then right. NSO, which later metamorphosed into what you have now as the NIA, DSS, and all these other things. So there was a vacuum, you know, when that was done. So even the Metasini crisis and the Angolu reports all stated that. that when they removed that special branch from the police, they did not put back, you know, that security intelligence. So that that gap is what has resulted in most of the near, you know, uh, non-performance of uh, internal security management in the country. So uh, for me, it was a, it was a big challenge how to bring it back, and uh, you, you know, by the time I was done. You know, in intelligence, uh, we started having some. We, we could do some what you call predictive policing. Good. Good. You know, you could you could uh, say, oh, the vehicle was stolen from Medugori, mm -hmm. and the vehicle was used to detonate a bomb in Yaya. Mm -hmm. 
What make of vehicle was that? Golf vehicle. So anytime the golf vehicle is stolen anywhere, you can tell the policeman, look out for a golf vehicle. Mm -hmm. Instead of you blocking the highways and searching for all vehicle, you know, you now you can now predict mm -hmm. to say if this happens, you put this and this together, this is exactly what will happen. So we started developing some, you know, real-time intelligence that was actionable. Mm -hmm. Then the morning I woke up to see that I have been announced as the 18th Inspector General of Police. Something I never expected. I was already getting ready for retirement. You did uh, not wait for it? Yeah. No, 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 I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Um, I know that when I was supposed to be an IG was when um, the uh, incumbent IG then was to leave MD Abubakar. We, we had some series of interviews. Some uh, people came from um, the villa to interview us. Uh, but along the line, they said, well, um, the place was top heavy with South South police officers. A minima was the South from the South South. Equinum was from the South South. Uh, the president said, no, he wanted the balance. So they gave it to the young man from Chigawa. So I started getting my things set to, to go into retirement. That was when I started thinking about the law chambers, you know, security consultancy, you know, incorporating this foundation and all that. So I started getting ready for this thing. Then it suddenly it came. So and that was a high point. And it gave me opportunity to deepen those things that I actually were at, I thought were tangential in uh, internal security management, like creating the safer highways, creating the, uh, you know, uh, complaint response units. The technical platform that the police they have today, I installed it. You know, the IROT, the intelligence response team. I also put it in place. Uh, started the housing scheme for policemen. Incorporated the scholarship scheme for their for their children. So I, it, with that 13 months for me was uh, uh, it gave me an opportunity to you know put in place a foundation that modern policing, you know, can be built on. Whatever happened thereafter when I left, yeah. that one is for another day. Will, will you say we will ever get, get it correctly uh, in terms of policing Nigeria, like UK, like US? Will it ever happen? It will happen. Okay. You know, uh, it's the, the, the idea that there, there, there are some young men and women who are out there, who are within the system. Who you could say are mentally mobile you know who have gone through a lot of training both within and outside the country it is time and chance happens to us mm -hmm. all so we just pray that uh, uh, somebody you know changes can happen only at a strategic level yeah. it is when a change happens at a strategic level that you can you know cascade it down yeah. the line yeah. because it, it is what the boss you know, it is what the direction he gives. Yeah. That is where the men will follow, of course. Mm. You are outside the outside service now, um, and it seems you are into a lot of things, including philanthropy, including um, um, supporting society in terms of policing. Uh, what what is your drive? Well, uh, I, I think it has become a, a passion. Okay. Um, when my mother died about 70 years ago, before she died, she encouraged me to say, look, Solomon, you know what? It is because you went to school. That is why you, are, you think you are lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there are, there are a lot of people on the streets who, you know, are maybe even brighter than you, mm -hmm. but uh, they don't have the opportunity that you have. So anything you can do that to touch the lives of, you know, uh, the, the boys, the men, and uh, the boys and uh, girls in, in our community say, please do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is it doesn't cost you anything anyway and um, she she left her assets for me in my care i was only her own surviving son so and um, when i looked at the assets and i remember what she told me and said i should do a foundation to train people from her area uh, that's on one east and on one west uh, i said okay let me try and see if i can start it with the guidance of my uncle who was a professor we, we, we incorporated it and we started the first set of uh, people graduates we brought in in 2013, 2014 session. There were just five of them. I think three medical doctors and two uh, law students. And uh, as at February this year, 
uh, nine years of the program, we've been able to have about 50 university graduates in the system. And uh, sponsored by the yes, yeah, sponsored by the foundation. What is the most foundation? There is a Messi Igbe Arase Foundation. Ni Ifidom. That is the that is the foundation. So uh, and uh, we also now started having medical outreach. The doctors who were who were, who were graduating were now becoming part of the medical outreach we were having. And uh, I told them, I said, I don't want any payback. What the payback I want is for you people to now impact your communities. So every time in Ora, every February in Ora, the Ora people they look forward to the medical outreach. They look forward to the scholarship. And we, we raised the bar. We now said the GPA, the minimum GPA we will accept through the, your career, you know, listing will be 3.0, which means 2-1. Now, these young men and women, they started struggling to keep it because every year before you get your check, you have to show us evidence that you are still within that GPA, you know. Though there were one or two uh, these things which, which we could overlook, but uh, we, we maintained our standards and uh, our scholars became, you know, the, the high flyers. Some are already out now. I'm sure maybe your men will meet some of them when they go to Edo. Yeah. Quite interesting. So you've got 50? Yes, already. More than 24 of them have graduated. We still have about 20, 20 about 25, have, 26 have graduated. We still have about 23 who are still in the system. Some will be graduating. If not for this uh, closure of a uh, university, some would have been graduating to join them now. Uh, and along the line, we now said we were too elitist mm. in our conception of, yes. you know, the foundation because we were re relying on university education. Mm. So we now said, okay, why can't we now do some skill acquisition? Mm. So we now started bringing in the polytechnics and technical education mm. schools to capture people like, you know, people in building, people in engineering, uh, people in the uh, hospitality industry from the polytechnics, then teachers especially. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we have also started, you know, bringing into the force. So it is that experience mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, you know, uh, we got from the Mercy by my mother's foundation that encouraged me that I can also replicate the same thing where my father comes from, yeah, yeah. in a, you know, southern uh, Edo district. Yes. Yeah. What are you doing over there? We have set up a foundation too, mm -hmm. uh, but that foundation, because of my, my background, I am looking at mm -hmm. issues of how you can use education to mitigate insecurity. Mm -hmm. So we'll be having a security summit mm -hmm. where we'll be telling members of the public, the citizens that the police alone cannot do it. Yes, it is true that by uh, our constitution, section 14, they, they'll say, oh, they, it is the responsibility of government to ensure that, uh, you know, you have a safe and secure environment. Yeah. But we also, in chapter two of that same constitution, it says citizens have an obligation mm. to assist, yeah. you know, law enforcement officers. Yeah. And uh, by extension, you know, um, we the elites, we don't stay in the rural areas no. where most of these crimes they happen. We stay in the cities. Most of us, legally or illegally, we have security details no. attached to us. No. Okay. But that is not enough. We should be able to come out to say, there has a do another claim to say, oh, how can we, you know, uh, uh, assist the internal security? This, this government cannot do it alone. No. It's not possible. When you think about um, the things that government is doing, uh, they are enormous. Mm -hmm. you know, roads, mm -hmm. schools, hospitals. Uh, so how, how do you, where, where, where is the resources? The resources are limited, yeah. you know, so, and security <coughs> is capital intensive. Yeah. So you need, you know, good spirited people to come out to say, can we buy torchlights mm -hmm. and give to vigilante people, mm -hmm. you know, or can we buy whistle? Or can we buy a motorbike so that they could patrol, you know, their neighborhoods and see whatever information they have, they feed it into the policing system. We don't want to create, it's not, it's not duplicity. Yeah. We don't want to create another police force. No. We want to create a group of men and women who can gather information and give to the law enforcement officers. That is what is happening, what is going on in other places. So what and what are you looking forward to donate to? 
Okay. Um, the lecture is going to be sensitization. Yes. Of the elites. Then we are we have about fifty motorbikes, mm -hmm. and that we are going to donate. About six of us put it together. Uh, we are going to buy, give them uh, customized T-shirts. Mm -hmm. About 1,400. So the seven local governments in Edosa, uh, in Edosa, yeah. we have to 200. Yeah. We do 200 berets. Yeah. Then whistle, another 1,400. We give them raincoats. We give them touch lights. And uh, we are hoping that um, with time, we can also assist in fueling those motorbikes for them. Because uh, we will not want a situation where the motorbikes will now become a commercial bikes. <laughs> Are you also buying a vehicle for coordination? Yeah, yes. Okay. We bought one vehicle, one CNL uh, vehicle uh, for the coordinator. I think the coordinator should be in Benin or somewhere, I don't know where. So at least once, we expect that once in a while, they can go around and make sure that, you know, the purpose of those donations are being met because you don't, you don't appeal to people to bring in their money and put on the table and if the money is being you know misapplied yeah. you know it will not it will not encourage others who want to contribute to the system to contribute to the system so that's quite interesting the level of insecurity has become is alarming and we want to believe that uh, this effort will go mm -hmm. a long way mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to to coordinate it and especially when you spoke about those guys you that are involved in your scholarship who, who are those special students that you can say this one has no hope before but with this um uh, foundation they are able to go to school and they are graduating people from the north are there people to tell us something about this education thing? well you you see um uh, i have a guard yeah. uh, an illiterate man you know i employed from casila to take care of my accommodation in benin and along the line the daughter, you know, uh, met my wife on one, on one location when we went to Benin and complained that she was going to back to Casina to get married. And my wife looked at her. This girl was just about 15 or 16 years old. So my wife said, how can you go and get married at this age? What of your school? We put you in primary school. Well, I, he said, well, that was the agreement. Mm -hmm. So we called the father and the mother and they, they said, yes, that, that was the agreement. So my wife said, can we have the, the phone number of the man who she's going to get married to in Casino? And uh, they gave us the, the number and uh, my wife called the man and appealed to the man that, yes, we cannot stop you from marrying her, but can you allow us to train her? And uh, the man graciously ag agreed. So we took her into Greater Tomorrow in Benin, put her in the boarding house and insisted that uh, on no account should anybody take her away from the school except they get, you know, uh, clearance from me. Then I was commissioned out police in Aquaibo. And uh, when this girl finished, when she finished, she came out top grades in, in her wife, uh, this thing. She passed her jammed. So it was easy for us to just uh, put her into the university in Epoma, so uh, to reach economics. Uh, but for this crisis, she would have graduated in, in, by, you know, by now. And uh, the younger sister too, that was also in the College of Education in, uh, in Asaba, mm -hmm. you know, doing very well. The younger brother too, first class brain. So you see... Where uh, is that one? The younger that, one, that one is in Benin. Uh, that one is, uh, as she's, I think he's writing his... Uh, he'll be writing his WAEC. I just paid for his WAEC fees uh, last week. We'll be writing his wire next week, you know. So, um, you, I just, I, we just came to the realization, myself and my family, that no child is, no child is dull. Mm -hmm. All they need is just an environment to blossom. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, this scholarship we have just given now, uh, uh, Uzamiri, and it was somebody just called me up and said one of his boys in this area whose mother died, you know, suddenly. He's a beneficiary and that the boy was going to drop out of school. But uh, suddenly they saw the scholarship something online, applied, I interviewed them online too. You know, and uh, that is a beneficiary of it. I said, but how will I have known that uh, the mother, I, I don't know them. You know, we just, we just put it out there. But all we try to do is that we try to say, it is for indigent people. Mm -hmm. If your parents have a job, we expect they should be able to pay your school fees, yeah. especially if you're a government school. 
So, but sometimes we, do, we, do, we are not too right. Some uh, some bright boys too, they also get it because we are sometimes we are we are too fixated on yeah. the grades. So, for instance, if I see somebody really medicine with four point six GPA, mm. I am excited. Yeah. I say, oh, this is a very bright boy. Maybe if I encourage him, but maybe his parents yeah. they have the wherewithal yeah. to make him yeah. go to the. And by the time you start interviewing them, because they want the scholarship. The information they will give to you may not be correct, <laughs> <laughs> but once it, once it, once uh, once the scholarship is given, we are allowed to take his, you know to take it. Irrespective of where you come from, you, you are from the north, from the south, from the west. It, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Okay. The, the, this the one we did in uh, my mother's foundation was restricted to two local governments, okay. Owen East and Owen West. Okay. This one that we are doing, this I am making a provision for children of police officers. Mm -hmm. You know, to also benefit, especially officers who lost their lives, maybe fighting crime or insurgency. And I know that they are bright. If they apply, you know, I, I would, uh, I would want to incorporate them into it. How do you get funding? Uh, okay, um, I think I have been so lucky. For every event I have had, you know, the 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 funding for my mother's foundation. I converted her, the assets she left in my listing into a profit-making venture. <laughs> I built, you know, a 25-room uh, uh, accommodation mm -hmm. in Oria, where she comes from, have a sit-out bar, mm -hmm. you know. So the profit from that comes out from that listing at the end of the year, after they audit this thing, I take the profit from that place and put it into the foundation account. For and. Um, I have friends. Mm. I have been lucky. Uh, a lot of people have keyed into my vision. Uh, they feel, they, you know, it is something that is nice. Mm. So whenever we are going to do this thing, it's like as if we are going for a pilgrimage. Mm. All my friends from all over the country, they all converge. Even comrade on two occasions, you know, um, graced my uh, the foundation in Ora and uh, make generous, uh, you know, contribution to the comrade of the command of North Federal State. And uh, so all those are, it has been very easy. That is what I'm saying. It has been so easy to fund these things. You know, you just discover that at, uh, when, uh, the day you are going to give out the checks, that the assistance, the help and donations and all these things you get from friends and family and all those type of things, you know, clears up, you know, the fees. So that was why we even incorporated medical outreach. So some of the uh, SS funds, we, con we, we, we convert them into buying drugs for old women, for young children, and do two-day, you know, medical outreach, you know, towards uh, <coughs> that they fill into the scholarship. You'll be 60 um, next week or so. No, 60, I'll be 66. 66? Yes. I left, I left the police for six years ago when I was 60. Okay, yes. Yeah. Because you live when you are 60 or 35 years, whichever sorry. one comes yeah, from. My own 60 came first. So I, I'm, 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 I'm closing, heading towards 70 now. <laughs> don't, don't I look it? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> what, what, what is giving you? You see, healthy, you looking young. And yeah, yeah you because I, 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 I'm, I'm able to engage myself mentally oh. and physically. You know, uh, I do some, I do some workout. Uh, I, I was not as big as this when I left. <laughs> I'm just only seeing now that I'm, I'm putting on some weight uh, because uh, maybe not not too much uh, exercise. Uh, then I, I I I just try to moderate everything that I do. So everything is always in moderation. Uh, then try and make sure that uh, I find time at least once a year to do a comprehensive medical check. Yeah. yeah. Will you say you are fulfilled? Will you say, yes, I'm happy and fulfilled at 66? Um, let me put it this way. Uh, everything that happens to a man, there are very many hardworking people out there. Yeah. <laughs> it, re it requires the grace of God, yeah. you know, for you to be able to, you know, achieve your potentials. Yeah. So I think I have, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to God that I have, um, I'm a beneficiary of his grace. Uh, when I say I'm unfulfilled, I, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know whether I'm saying that. But I I I want to devote the rest of my life uh, to giving back. Mm -hmm. 
to people, to society, to people who I can help as much as I can. Because I have suddenly discovered that the only thing that gives me joy is when I find these young men and women that I don't know, you know, coming out, they are graduating, they are inviting me for their graduation, they are happy, you know. Some came to do their youth service here in these chambers. Those boys who read law, who were posted to Abuja, you know, and uh, I just find myself, you know, thanking God that, you know, I had, I, I was part of, you know, making their dreams, you know, come true. Just as a lot of people too. Yeah. I've also, you know, uh, God has also sent them, you know, as uh, as pathfinders yeah. for whatever I, I have become in life. Who is your role model? Who do you look at and say, I, I want to take this from this? Your role model, who is that person? <laughs> Well, I have many role models. Uh, my parents, my, they, were, they were my role models. They were very hard on me. And, uh, I, I used to be a very rascally young man, <laughs> playing football all over the place. And uh, my mother just told me, "Say, you know what? He said, any man who does not seek after knowledge, that, that is the only thing that is, ever, that is enduring. Mm -hmm. That uh, one day, you, know, you will discover that that is your fallback position. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can you can play football, but once they enjoy you now, you know, they say you can. Then when we were playing football in those days, then we weren't going to the academic arts. It was not as lucrative as it used yeah, to be. When yeah. they, you know you go outside the country, you make a lot of money. No, we were playing it for the fun then, you know. There were very few schools in the old uh, uh, Midwestern Bender States, Hussey yeah. College, College of Sabugidaura, Edu College. ICC and all those were the people who were competing in when it comes to athletics and all those type of everything. So my parents were really they were they were instrumental to making sure that I did not derail, you know. Uh, then along the line, I, when um, I joined the the police force, there were some people that God sent, you know, to come and you know direct my path. Yeah. Um, one is late now. Um, from Delta, Mr. Ogomone. Mr. Ogomone, I met him here in uh, Abuja when I was a very young officer. He took a liking to me. And along the line, he left for the headquarters. And when he had a, when he had an opportunity, he nominated me to go to the United Nations uh, peacekeeping. Um, that was also going to give me an international exposure yeah. in my career. Yeah. By the time I came back, my path crossed with Tafa Balogu. Tafa Balogu was my commissioner in the old Bend Estates. I was his divisional police officer. And, uh, you know, on one occasion when I went to see him, he, he had just finished from the law school. Mm -hmm. So he said, oh, Solomon, you did very well when you were in the UN uh, mission. Uh, people were carrying your, your name all over the place. He said, but um, uh, why can't you go and read law? <laughs> So that was that that ignited my interest in yeah. law. So he pre prompted me. And uh, along the line, he left, went to Delta. To, he was first commissioner to open up Delta. Mm. Then Mr. Hindiro came. Yeah. Hindiro became the new, the new CP. Yeah. I had a, a good rapport with him too. And uh, the, those two men, they were to determine you know, my, my career path in the police. <laughs> because Tafana became an IG. Yes. He now sent for me to come and become his principal staff officer. When he left, Ehidiro became the IG yes. and retained me <laughs> as his. <laughs> so, within all what I thought I lost as a policeman due to federal character, voter system, I gained working with the two of them for a period of about five years. So that one, you know, changed, you know, my my, yeah. my police story. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that sometimes people, God sent people to come and, you know, direct. So to, to me, they, um, they remain my mentor. I'm, I'm, always, I'm ever grateful to them. Yeah. Wonderful, quite yeah. interesting mm -hmm. story. You, you want to tell us, moving forward in life, what, what are the, what are those, um, achievement, those goals you think you want to fulfill all of these, all of this before you say you want to retire and then rest? Uh, do, I, do I, you know, apart from 
all these um, humanitarian services, yeah. I, I, I pray I live long to deepen them, yes. to make sure that they work. Yes. Uh, because I don't know what my children, whether they have the same, you know, <laughs> disposition yeah. like me. Yeah. That is why whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure that I institutionalize, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the issue so that uh, it will outlive me, yeah. you know. Uh, my, my memoirs mm. have to be written wow. and uh, that I have to do as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm grateful to God, uh, John. God has been very, very merciful. Uh, there is nothing that has been that is uh, noble and good that I have wished in my heart that God has not placed in my heart. Right. So I am just grateful. I don't, I don't seek for anything. <laughs> you know that I will say, oh, I will say if I don't become this one, you know, no, 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 no. I for whatever place I have found myself. I am ever grateful to God, and uh, I want to leave it at that. So I take it one day at a time. Yeah. You know, uh, whenever you know how how I can reach out to people, be of be of assistance to them, people who will share the same worldview. And assistance, assistance, philanthropy, mm -hmm. helping society. Mm -hmm. People do a lot of things because they want to collect from here. You give from here, you collect from here. Mm -hmm. People, people, politicians do 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 things today. Tomorrow mm -hmm. they contest election. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at uh, politics? Uh, no, I, 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 I have suddenly looked at looked at myself. I don't have that temperament <laughs> to stand on a podium and insult people, lie against them when you know the thing is not justifiable <laughs> you know i it's not that i will not say that i'm not sympathetic to you know some yeah. political goals yeah, yeah, yeah. um then, then you come and look at our claim yeah. our politics is not ideologically driven so when i am going to say i want to join a political party i have some things i want to do yeah. if i can if i'm talking about security sector reforms yeah. on that what platform will i have the opportunity to deepen yeah internal security mm -hmm. management in the country. Uh, that is one thing. How will, I, will it also afford me the, the uh, opportunity to help people? Mm -hmm. You know, that's another thing. But when you look at it, this thing, we are not ideological. Mm -hmm. to, today, you are in this one, the other party wins, you jump there, you do So I can't do that. I can't, I can't lie against people. I can't insult people. So I just discovered that, uh, yes, Whenever they call me to consult, to do one or two things for some political parties, I do it for them because I have some few friends who who are older than me, mm -hmm. who uh, I think I can, you know, work with. Mm -hmm. uh, but apart from that, I I don't. You are not doing all of this because you want to contest. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. If I'm doing it, you know, like now, you know, we are we are starting a new phase of this thing. Yeah. But meanwhile, like this uh, program, I'm telling you, my mother's program was started twenty. 13. Yeah. At that time, my, my mother died when I was an assistant commissioner of police. I incorporated in this thing when I was a deputy commissioner of police. Because immediately she died, I got promoted. Then we started the first you know, intervention in 2013 when I was a commissioner of police. So it's long yeah, ago. Yeah. Now it's going to 10 years that I start we started, you know, this uh, something. So I cannot be starting this one in uh, Edo South. Because I want to go into politics. Which one, what, what do I? What when, am? When you were in the politics, your mother used to call you IG, IG, IG before she died. Does she have a prepositional that you are going to be an IG? You know, what happened was that I was the principal staff officer to IG. <laughs> okay. So when people go to see her, yes. they will say, Ah, your son, he is working with uh, IG. <laughs> you know, if you if you don't if you don't see him, you can't see the IG. <laughs> so my mother and I one one once I now visited her, he said, Hey, what is IG? <laughs> <laughs> I say, Inspector General of Police. He say, Oh, but you are not the Inspector General. I say, No, I'm I'm his aide. <laughs> yeah. He says, So don't go and start wearing the toga of an IG. <laughs> so if you see people try and help them, oh, you never can tell you will become an IG tomorrow. Wow. So that was how you know the whole thing came about. Yeah. Uh, so it was. Uh, it's as if she was encouraging me that oh, no, no, just just be good to people, yeah. uh, help them as much as you can. Uh, maybe one day you know you also will become an IG. Unfortunately, she she did not live long to see me become uh, an IG. Uh, who is your godfather? Do I have one? <laughs> <laughs> God, God has really been, uh, yeah. you know, the assistance I've had, you know. Uh, then the few people God sent within my career line, you know, to help, you know, uh, identify me. Yeah. Uh, 
So, you know, I could say that those ones were the people who actually, you know, charted my path in the But, you know, these are our, most of our organizations these days, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, talent alone is not enough. No. Somebody must identify that talent yes. and help you to build it up. You know? So that, those, were, those were the things that those two men did, Tava and uh, Hindero. Uh, they just added it, yeah, and they are Yoruba people, anyway. mm -hmm. so, and uh, you know, so it, it hadn't, it had, had nothing to do with where I come no, from. Uh, no, no. God, God just, uh, just, they just saw me and uh, they liked me and uh, they tried to project me. Finally, for the youth, the upcoming ones, they, they don't tell us that education is a scam. There's no need going to school because you go to school, you don't have a job. Um, they, they just want to make quick money. <laughs> what, what advice do you have? <laughs> My dear friend, you know, um, yes, I told you just now. I said, when we're in the university, all the companies, PZ, Mechelin, uh, civil service, they all come there to interview us at our, in our final year. Things were good. Now, the people, they get out of school, they stay long periods, no job. You have to start looking for people who will be able to, you know, most of the jobs are not even advertised. But is that an alternative for going into criminal uh, ventures? No, it's not. You know, and uh, what education does to you is that if you are educated and you want to be a cara bob seller, mm. eh? or you want to start selling pap and distributing it, yeah. You know the the, the the style you yeah, do it yeah. is quite different. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. so there is no alternative for knowledge. There's just no alternative for knowledge. So it is just uh, it's it's only it's only reasonable that you allow people, you know, to be able to you know achieve their potentials. Things will not continue like this. So uh, my advice is that uh, everybody mm. that try as much as possible to go through the educational system. Um, I, I have traveled widely across the world. Some of our brothers who live here, to say they are going to this place, mm. going to that place, you know, without any background, mm. without an educational background, man, is hell. You see, one of them told me, he said, Oga Solomon, when the white men came here and took us as slaves, mm. the chains were in our hands. Mm. Mm. If you are not educated and you go down there, the chain is in your neck. Mm. So that is the difference. Mm. So you must, you know, education is just, is just the only way you'll be able to hold your own, the, self, the dignity, your uh, the self-confidence, yeah. you know. Uh, so there's no alternative to it. So how do you relax? Are you <laughs> I socialize. I socialize. Oh. Uh, once in a while, I'm sure, maybe after this lecture, you know, um, on uh, on Tuesday in Benin, after the lecture, we are going to have an open house. My friends all over, you know, will come, sit down, relax. I do, I do a lot of sports too. Okay. And occasionally, I read. Yeah, I, I like classical novels. Okay. So those are the areas I like. Music. Oh, fantastic! So I do old school. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is your best? Uh, I like uh, jazz music. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm at home with jazz. You know. Well, mm -hmm. What's your best food? Oh, I like native food. I I, I like I go for a lot of uh, black soup, oh. uh, vegetables. Uh, mostly native. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a local man. Are you eat with your hand? Uh, yes, yes. I eat with my hand. I eat with my hand. <laughs> Those are the ones that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to appreciate you for granting us this opportunity to have this chat with you. The privilege uh, is mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on your sister Yes. Thank you yes. yes. so The guy is getting older. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, you are becoming a role model to me now. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Well done. Thank, thank you, yourself. John. I also like what you're doing. You are so good at what you do. So just uh, just keep it up. I appreciate it. And uh, like every road, it has its bends, yeah. it has its twists, yeah. you know. Uh, there were many times I fell and I stood up. Mm. I, I never, I doubted my, you know, my ability to stand up, yeah. you know. So you always along the line, you always run into obstacles and challenges and all this stuff. But those are the, those, they, they make you better. Mm -hmm. you, you learn from them. Yeah. 
and uh, it, it, it creates a, a new path for you. Yeah. So please just hang in there. Thank you so much. Thank so you. Thank you.